Yeah. It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. For their details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Linda Boss McClelland. And this is It's, it's Movie, Movie Time. Time. Linda, we have a film today called Youth, directed by Paolo Sorrentino. And it stars Michael Caine and Harvey Keitel. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me. What does a film starring two guys who are, well, Michael Caine's 82, and I think Keitel is pretty close to that, with a title like Youth? Uh, <laughs> you know, after I walked out, I remembered that one of um, Michael Caine's first hit movies was Alfie. Right. And there was a song that everybody loved, uh, What's It All About, Alfie? Yes. Is it just for the moment we live? <laughs> and here he is 50 years later in this movie, and they're asking all those same questions. Um, he plays an aging, withdrawn composer, conductor, uh, still pondering the meaning of life. Right. Um, and of course, they're at this beautiful, lush resort in the Swiss Alps. Uh, while he's there, um, he is asked by the Queen of England to conduct uh, his, his one most famous composition, Simple Songs, for the Prince's birthday. And he declines. Right. He says for personal reasons. But we really don't find out what those reasons are until the very end sure. of the film. Not, A very uh, poignant uh, yeah. moment. And, and uh, Harvey Keitel oh, is boy. a director, a film director yeah. of some acclaim, who is still at it. Now, the difference between yes. these two characters is Kane is withdrawing, and Keitel is in there doing what he hopes to be his magnum opus right. with the several of his kind of indifferent 30-something writers. Yeah, they're trying to write the script. <laughs> they're trying to write the script. But, uh, so, yeah, I guess what I'm inferring from uh, your opening comments is that it's not just about old age. No. That it's really about engagement. I mean, if you think about Alfie, what's it all about? There's a very young man. That song is suggesting uh, that there are things to be learned about life. Right, they're still trying to figure it out. They're still trying to figure it out. And here are these old guys at this spa in the Swiss Alps. Right. And came... And between doctor's exams and <laughs> massages. Yes. And I love the way they pronounce massage. It's massage. <laughs> uh, the water therapy. Mm. But Harvey and Michael wander the grounds, asking these questions, talking about their past, um, and they both are wondering how they got there. It's all of a sudden, oh, I'm older or old. <laughs> yes, right, right, know, right. What, what, what's it all about now? It's the photography is phenomenal. I mean, the, oh. the Swiss Alps alone, and then they do have shots of the Bridge of Sighs and uh, Saint Mark, San Marco Square in Venice, right. uh, they have shots in London, so it's a it's a very neatly photographed place, but mostly the Swiss Alps scarcely men because right. um, my first co-host on It's Movie Time and I, Clay Lowe, um, did st a very similar walk. Right. We were not as old as these two guys, but we walked down uh, one of the mountains in the Swiss right. Alps, and it was every bit as beautiful as this oh, one. Oh, it's Maybe so beautiful. So. Yeah. Um, but because the story takes place in this gorgeous resort, with such an odd mix of guests. I mean, there was this grotesquely overweight retired rest. No, it was soccer player. You know, I've read also somebody who interprets him as being a retired opera singer. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Right. I, I didn't know exactly what he was. Most people think he's a retired. I think I read somewhere that he really is. I mean, he was oh, he sort is of in Lorella, playing, yeah. playing himself. Anyway, he is. <laughs> he's a great character. But I thought for a few minutes that it was going to be like the Grand Budapest Hotel. It didn't have all the humor, but no, it had this yeah. odd mix of people and that I, I thought, you know, where is this going? And I love movies like this, and the characters are not quite as odd or as eccentric. For instance, there is a couple that is at dinner. Yes. I think they're married. Yes. Well, yes. And uh, they recur. And so this couple, which is really not speaking to each other. Right. They never speak right. to each other. And when you take that former athlete that gigantic former athlete and then you take these and i'm trying to think of another eccentric character whom they they meet uh perhaps paul dano is oh yes jimmy tree i think is his name is, right. is an actor he's an actor right. who had sort of a one-hit wonder and he was only known for the robot 
going to pass science right. fiction so, movie. And he, he's hoping, he's getting ready to play this new role right. that he thinks is going to move his career it's forward. It's a great role. And I, wait, till, wait till you see what role he's going to be playing. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, it reminds you a little bit of Birdman about that because I think part of this is the burden of fame. Both of our, our principals are famous men in their right, right. profession. Correct. Dano is a famous actor, but of course he is being remembered for this role of the robot, and he just can't seem to shake it. And, and Kane's character, similarly. Right, because he has one you know, uh, known composition, and, yeah. uh, and <laughs> he, because he declines to, to play for the Queen, we see him conducting imaginary symphonies in the cow pastures. And, uh, yes, oh my, how I remember them with the tinkling bells. Yes, and, oh. you never know what's going through his mind. But the movie presents like a feast of images and with a lot of unanswered questions. Um, the meaning of life, the passing of youth, the importance sure. of love. But you know, yeah, and you know what? This is not to me so much about the passage of youth, but how you're conducting your life, so to speak, and we look at the conductor, Right. Uh, whether you are going to continue or whether you are going to withdraw from life, not because you're 82, but just because that's where you are in life. Uh -huh. Because I think even um, Michael Caine's daughter, Rachel Weisz, in this, has some decisions to make. Right. As, as Keitel's son dumps her for right. somebody else. Very dramatic. Very yeah. Dramatic. Uh, and, and even, now here's, as you were talking about the eccentric characters, uh, let me interject with one that was my favorite. And this was the Queen's emissary. Oh yes, <laughs> who was doing the the total British takeoff oh. on the uptight? Oh right, uh, the uptight emissary. It was it's just wonderful. It, it's a lot. It's a lot of good laughs as Kane continues to turn down the Queen's request right. that he that he play this this piece of his. Um, then we we have, although I th I think what we've described, Lenny, are. Um, our, our, our classic moments in the film, that is moments we might have expected of reflection. Uh, and it, therefore it seems so much far superior to me than uh, The Walk in the Woods. Redford right. and Nolte. The same setup, right. two guys talking. Would, would you agree with that? I do. Um, like I said before, they present a lot of questions, but they go unanswered. And the plot is a little thin. So you just have it's to sit right, back yeah. and relax and try to answer the questions yourself. Um, I didn't see the other movie, but uh, this one okay, I think yeah, is much right. more... It's I think it's stimulating the fact that it makes you think. Uh, it's so beautiful that it, it just... You think you start wondering about the things yourself. You're not given all the answers. Uh, you're sort of asked to come up with them yourself. Yes. No, I, excellent, yes. I think much of this is oblique. Uh, it's not straight in your face, and therefore you're allowed to enjoy the characters oh, yeah. at this very minimalist Grand Budapest Hotel. Right. I think your illusion is correct. Right. Um, and there are traditional moments that you might have expected with these old boys in the pool. Do you oh, remember this one? when Miss Universe walks into the pool, uh, Michael Caine and Harvey Keitel are sitting in the pool, <laughs> yes. side by side, and in walks Miss Universe totally nude right and she glides into the oh, swimming it's a pool wonderful and moment. it just her beautiful body just fills sure. up the screen and the boys are, <laughs> they're not bad boys no they're just appreciating right. it it's something you might have expected but i think they react because very carefully they juxtapose this with a previous scene when she dresses them down do you remember that yes uh when she comes in i think when they're eating yeah and, they're watching the nightly entertainment i think and she talks to them there yes and she in effect, tells them she's not any dummy at all. And she right. proves that mm -hmm. in her conversation. Right. And then they put that together with her being naked going in there, which is the thing you would have expected in these old boys. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the the richness of the film. Okay, I have a question for you. Are you ready? <laughs> all right, I am. Because uh, I couldn't figure out the answer to this. Oh, boy. One reviewer called the film a symphonic celebration of the grandeur of movies. What do you think she meant by that? Well, I think that in talking uh, in in showing Harvey Keitel uh, and his struggle to have the the uh, a great film toward the end of his life, when you look at Jane Fonda's oh boy, um, just outstanding oh, role yeah. right. as a a, a a bitchy star, right? Uh, you and and when you see 
that how difficult it is even for a world-class director to pull off a film. I mean, after all, Fonda's character is not going to be in his film, which means no, his film is dead. turned him down, and yeah. he was hanging his hopes right. on her. And then if you put the metaphor of the symphony, when you, we have our conductor there, right. it's a nice phrase to talk about that. What was it again, say, the symphony of... I just thought it was so interesting. Yeah, it's a good one. Go. Oh, uh, she called the film a symphonic celebration of the grandeur of movies. Yeah, and I, you know, that's what, what's such so good about that. And I love, the, I love the stuff that our colleagues do. Some of the writing that our our critics do is just beautiful. Yeah, and that is the grandeur of movies is not only this movie, which you and I, I believe, thought was grand, mm -hmm. uh, together with the grand challenge of making movies mm. within the film itself so it's right. much more about film than you would think initially a couple of old guys just at their spa um yeah so that's it's a good one yeah now Liddy. yes Johnny. I, this is very nice and someday i'm hoping to go back to the swiss alps and i know that you probably will too don't you think i'd love it <laughs> all right uh but we're we're grounded on earth here we have our, our, our little National Public Radio show, and people expect us to award a grade to this film. It's called Youth. Paolo Sorrentino is the director. Michael Caine, Harvey Keitel, and Jane Fonda star oh, yeah. in this movie. Linda Boss McClellan, what grade <laughs> would you give this film? Okay. Uh, it's so beautiful, and the acting is so superb, but the plot is a little thin, <laughs> so I give it a B. Oh, okay. And I'm giving it a solid A. I was ecstatic over it. I think it, you know, you brought in that the grandeur of filmmaking. And, and for me, it's a grand film. I, I grant you from my own life and having been in the Alps uh, with my buddy there that. Uh, you know that that influences me a bit, and because I love these two actors, Kane oh, and Kaitel, I'm just Fantastic. you're right. I was just a sucker for that, but and wonderful. That's it's movie time, and the difference is right here between the two of us. And I think I'm going to go have a massage. <laughs> yes.